The most challenging part of the time value of money chapter is figuring out what kind of problem we are looking at. So we've got to ask ourselves some questions. Number one, is the problem an annuity problem? Uh, in order to see an annuity, if you have equal payments and equal periods, you have yourself an annuity. If not, then it's not. Second of all, are we looking at a present value problem or a future value problem? Uh, with annuities, we need to look at where the lump sum is, and I'll give a visual on the next slide to help out with that. But look at the lump sum. If the lump sum is up front, if you're starting at something and ending at nothing, you've got a present value annuity problem. If you're starting with nothing and ending with something, then you're dealing with a future value annuity problem. Uh, after you've figured out what type of a problem it is, if it's a present value or future value annuity or not, you need to figure out, well, what's the missing component? And that usually ends up being a little easier. Then you've got to solve for the missing component. As long as you know Excel, that won't be very challenging. So here's some examples, or here's some visuals on the annuity, future value, or present value. Right here you can see we've got no value at the beginning. We end with a value. So this is a future value of annuity example. On the opposite side of the spectrum, if you start at something like a loan and end with nothing in terms of how much you owe, at the beginning you owe something, at the end you owe nothing, you're probably dealing with a present value of annuity problems. So now I'm going to give you some examples of different problems, and you're going to have to take a look at them. Uh, some of these will be easier, some of these will be more challenging. First one, you want to buy a used car. You can afford payments of no more than $400 per month for, for two years. If you can obtain financing at 12%, what car value can you afford? So we need to look. First of all, do we have an annuity problem? We do. We have equal payments, equal periods. We're paying $400 every month for two years. So we've got ourselves an annuity problem. Second of all, you can see we owe an amount at the beginning, but we're hoping to owe nothing at the end. So do we have a present value or future value? In this case, we have a present value. We're going from something to nothing. And now we just got to fill in the components that we know. We know the payment is $400. We know the rate is going to be 1% because we're making 12% but monthly payments. So 12% is an annual rate. When we drill, drill it down to a monthly rate, it's 1%. Number of periods, we're making monthly payments for two years. So 12 times 2 is 24. And our future value is nothing. So that leaves our missing component to be present value. And when we plug all this into Excel, we figure out the present value of the fault car we can afford is $8,497. For example, your company wants to have $100,000 saved up in five years. How much must you invest today, earning 7% annually, in order to have the necessary amount saved? Well, we have no equal payments, so it's not an annuity problem. And since we just want to know how much we need to invest today, it ends up being a present value problem. So we fill in our components. We know the rate is 7%. We know the number of periods are five. We know the future value is $100,000. Our missing component ends up being our present value. So how do we, what do we get for present value when we plug all that in? We need to invest $71,298.62. So as you can see, you don't gain a ton of value by just leaving it in an account. More of an annuity structure helps build balances much quicker. We've looked at two examples. Here's a third example. Your client wants to retire in 30 years with $2 million. You can earn 8% annually. How much should your client invest every single quarter? So we've got some things to deal with here. We're, we're dealing with an amount that we're going to invest every single quarter, so we're going equal payments, equal periods. We've got ourselves an annuity problem. We're starting with nothing. We're going to end with something, so we are dealing with a future value problem. Our rate is going to be 8% annually, but since we're making quarterly investments, we drill it down to 2%. Since we're making 30 years worth of payments, but they're quarterly payments, we're going to make, in the end, 120 investments or payments. The future value that we are looking for is $2 million even, and the present value, we have nothing to begin with. So what's our missing component? Our missing component, component ends up being our payment. How much are we going to invest every single quarter? And we can see we're going to invest a little over $4,000. Now, it sounds like a lot, but when you really think about it, $4,000 times 120, you're really only putting in close to half a million dollars into the account, and you're going to end up with a future value balance of $2 million. So, again, lots of growth in there. Last example, in the future, you decide to open a retirement plan for your child on their fifth birthday. You invest $5,000 expecting an 8% return compounded quarterly. How much will your, will your child's account have in 50 years? No equal payments. We're making one simple investment, so this is not an annuity problem. And we want to know an amount in the future, so it must be a future value problem. So we put in our components, 
8% compound and quarterly again, so 2% in the end. Number of periods, 50, and then since it's compound and quarterly, we're going to say it's 50, 200 compounds, okay, 200 compounds over the life of the investment. We're going to invest $5,000 today, so our present value is $5,000. The missing component that we have is the future value. So how much will all that add up to if we invest $5,000 today and let it sit there for 50 years? Well, let's just say happy birthday to your daughter in 50 years, uh, or your son perhaps, because they will end up with $262,424.49, just in case they really want those 49 cents. Happy birthday indeed. Hopefully you know these problems and are able to decipher which problem is which a little bit better.